Uh, we see the man, this is a man alive, who's got uh, 263,000 and, 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 and something followers in Twitter, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, this is, would be my question, but I, I will leave it at the end of the presentation. Uh, you guys, you can, prepare, you can prepare your own questions and you listen uh, to him. We, we've been through this presentation, so I, I'll switch off my presentation on your one, actually, right. and we, we can go on with it. Sounds yeah, good. Okay, present, presentation is here, man is here, everything is in place. Okay, I, I'm, I just leave it, everything is to you. Junpei, it's Sounds all good. yours. Awesome. Thank you very much, Anton. I really appreciate uh, you inviting me to do this uh, presentation. And uh, I look forward to uh, conversing with all of you guys in the social world um, out there. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the do's and don'ts of digital strategy. Okay. And so if you're suffering from a lackluster digital strategy, if you have engagements that just aren't converting, or if you are like me and have limited budgets, uh, right? Uh, this is the webinar for you. So, um, if, if just to give you a little more background information about myself, um, my name is Junte Duane, uh, and I am very excited to be here. Um, and I'll of course be your host. Um, and so, going into a little bit more about my background uh, to let you know, I am an avid blogger uh, at juntedelane.com where I blog about all things digital marketing, social media, content marketing, uh, SEO, and digital branding. I also am the digital brand manager for the University of Southern California uh, where I uh, manage a lot of the digital and social communications for the admissions and financial aid departments. I also am a speaker, and I've spoken around the, the U.S. Uh, giving keynotes and workshops uh, surrounding digital marketing, um, and you can see some of my past speaking engagements on my uh, on my speaking page there on my blog. Uh, I also am uh, the owner of Digital Delane, which is a digital marketing consultancy uh, that helps brands grow their business through digital platforms. Uh, I've been working a lot on um, exciting projects this year, ranging from clients in the technology space, consumer products, uh, nonprofits, uh, entertainment. Um, it's really been a good year for me. And so some of the insights that you'll see in this presentation uh, are the same insights that I actually provide some of my clients. So I'm going to ask that as we move um, through this presentation that you shut down your email program and you close the door if you have to. Essentially, uh, we want to eliminate any distractions that you may have because um, I, I really want you to get the most out of this webinar. So at the end of this webinar, I'm going to provide you with a link to download a strategy that will essentially take a lot of the stress out of the, out of the, the digital um, marketing and individual strategy development process. Uh, so again, if you stay uh, throughout this if you stay till the end of this webinar, I will give you that link where you can immediately download it. Uh, but if you'd like, if you're really anxious to, to download some, some, some cool um, templates, um, I actually have a digital marketing strategy template uh, that I offer to my blog subscribers uh, who receive my newsletters. Uh, if you go on my website, you also are able to uh, download this email marketing strategy, uh, excuse me, this digital marketing strategy template. I also am very active on social media. As Anton mentioned, I have over 200, uh, 260,000 Twitter followers, so I'm highly engaged with, with Twitter. Um, so if you uh, see any quotes or any charts or diagrams, things like that, uh, feel free to tweet away uh, and include the hashtag digital strategy. So I'll take a look at that hashtag uh, and see if you guys have any questions as well. Um, so please do that. Also, I know you guys are going to have questions, right? It's, it's inevitable. So I'll be answering questions at the end, um, but if I'm able to, um, if I'm not able to answer any of your questions, of course, we can go on social media. If you're watching a replay of this webinar, I also would be able to respond uh, as soon as I can uh, through social media at a later date. 
All right, so here's what you learn. I'm going to shut down my uh, camera here, and we'll go uh, uh, dive deep into this presentation. All right, so here's what you'll learn. Uh, you're going to learn what goes into your digital strategy. Uh, you're going to learn how to use data to improve your strategy. Uh, also, I'm going to talk about the best practices for digital strategy execution. I'm also going to talk about various ways to measure your strategy. Now, just to give you a little bit more uh, insight on my background again, um, you know, I started uh, a social network uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is about 400 miles north of Los Angeles, California. Uh, and during this time, I focused on building an online niche community uh, that essentially allowed users to access different events across uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. They're able to RSVP for events, view photos, uh, participate in forums, dialogue about local events and entertainment industries, and so on. Uh, but then Facebook happened. And I say Facebook happened because this was right during the, this was during the time where Facebook was uh, just um, uh, starting to grow. And um, they pretty much overpowered us. And uh, we had to essentially join them. <laughs> and so um, during this time, I, I spent time developing, launching, uh, and then, of course, sunsetting uh, these niche social networks. Uh, but I was able to gain valuable experience from doing that. And um, here's a social network here. And so during, during that experience, I am able to help other organizations uh, enhance their digital strategy. So um, from that experience gained uh, when, I, when I caught my social network startup bug uh, to consulting with different businesses and the work I do here at USC, uh, I'm able to come up with a foundation for what to do and what not to do uh, when developing a top-notch digital strategy. So when I, when I define do's and don'ts, I'm referring to the many aspects of digital marketing, right? So from understanding the wants and needs of your customers to the process and methods used to engage with those customers on a digital platform. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say, you know, what are, when I ask what are the do's and the don'ts of digital strategy. Now let's take a, let's take uh, a step fast forward. Now there's one of my favorite movies is called The Minority Report. And this movie was um, an action detective thriller uh, that's set in 2054, uh, where police utilize um, a psychic, psychic technology to arrest and convict murderers before they even commit a crime. And so here Tom Cruise plays uh, the head of his crime unit, and he himself is accused of a future murder of a man that he hasn't even committed, right? Very futuristic, right? So you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. So one, one very important uh, scene in that movie uh, is when uh, John Anderson, which is Tom Cruise's character, he races through the shopping mall and he is hit with a flurry of interactive advertising, right? So the, he, he had screens, um, uh, making pitches, selling American Express cards. Um, uh, they also had a Guinness and, and, and so on, all these different brands that were trying to talk uh, to John based on his individual preferences, right? And so the digital landscape is changing, right? And, and this is sort of an example of how digital, uh, digital marketing is changing the landscape, right? And so we are now able to create highly relevant highly targeted uh, digital ads. And, and this essentially makes you think about your digital strategy and think about how you're able to leverage digital technology in order to reach and convert your customers. So that thing that you have in your pocket that you call a smartphone, well, it's not a phone. It's, it's a digital tracking device with phone functionality. All right, so think about it. The vast majority of our actions on a smartphone really have nothing to do with making a call, right? It, 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 and, and what do you think that Google and, and Facebook and all those other apps on your phone are doing with your data, right? They're, they're trying to uh, learn as much about you so that they can serve you these marketing communications that will uh, essentially spark your interest. 
And so this is important uh, when understanding the digital horizon um, and, and how you can leverage your business um, through the digital platform. Now, first thing that you must do is take a step back, right? Look at your business from a distance. Um, you know, try to see the bigger picture, and um, you know, ask the people that are involved with the success of your business what should be included in your digital strategy. That's something that you should definitely do, right? And so, chances are that they they may mention um, social media, uh, mobile analytics, email, things like that, right? But ultimately, the best thing that you should do for your organization is try to stimulate digital transformation, right? Um, and that's something that's needed in order for your business to succeed in a digital marketplace. So if you are lacking resources, um, you have to do everything that you can do to create buy-in so that your senior managers will give you the, the resources uh, to establish a strong digital marketing strategy. And so the future of digital marketing starts with that transformation, right? So again, getting that commitment from your senior managers, um, possibly appointing uh, someone in charge uh, of your digital um, marketing strategy to, to spearhead the uh, collective agreement uh, of all the stakeholders, everyone in the company, everyone in your organization to move the organization forward through, through, by utilizing digital platforms. Uh, and so they, they would do things like provide tools and training needed, um, whether it be webinars such as this one, um, or partner with a digital marketing specialist, uh, a consultant, things like that, people like myself as well, uh, and utilize things like tools like my blog and so on, so that you're able to take articles and send them to your boss so that you can create more buy-in so that they can understand more about your digital marketing capabilities. Now this guy is Jeff Bezos, and Jeff Bezos is one of uh, a modern pioneer for digital transformation, right? He obviously is the CEO of Amazon, and and Bezos went from um, being going beyond normal business practices of you know simply selling products online. He actually sees opportunities in other markets, right? Such as music, TV, uh, apps, um, books, of course, uh, and also consumer products. And so the whole point of Amazon's digital strategy is to, is to supplant the old management theory of providing one product that's marketed directly to one customer, right? He, expand, he expanded and decentralized his, his digital marketing strategy to encompass everything that his potential consumer would want. So essentially, he created this this ecosystem of services, right? Um, uh, that that fared that fared well for for him. And of course, he even did some crazy things like um, testing out drones to deliver packages immediately after an order is being placed. That is currently being tested in California right now. Um, and so that's we'll see uh, the future of that and and um, see if that really ends up working out for Jeff. And here are a couple tools. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'm, I'm going to give you guys some tools to utilize to enhance your digital strategy. And here's a couple books uh, that I recommend. One is called Blue Ocean Strategy. It's a great book. Um, it talks about how you uh, should establish your business in uncharted territory where your competition is not. Um, and then another book uh, called uh, Competitive Strategy. Uh, and this uh, particular book talks about exactly that, like how to um, align your business uh, and digital marketing um, to, to remain competitive in your marketplace. All right, so let's talk about the second step. And the second step, obviously, is to analyze, right? And, and the most important thing to analyze is your data, right? So you want to utilize the data that you have on your cons on your customers um, to inform your digital marketing communications and also inform your offerings, 
right? So you want to inform by uh, collecting data on your customers, you'll know exactly what your customers want because you'll you'll the data would be in front of you, and so you can tailor your your marketing communications to those customers. You also want to um, inform use data to inform your offerings as well. So if you know that your customers want white papers instead of um, ebooks or blog posts, then you can essentially create those types of content. Or even if your customer would rather have a webinar, such as this one, instead of an ebook, uh, you can produce more webinars. So this is, those are just all the different examples of how you're able to uh, analyze your business and look at the data um, that is there in order to move your organization forward. Now, data is a huge, huge thing. I mean, that's that's a buzz, buzzword in the marketing industry, right? Big data. Everyone's talking about big data. And when you think about it, back in the beginning of time, right, when we were, you know, came in writing on the walls, right, uh, and, and all the way until 2003, we create that much data every two days, right? But unfortunately, a lot of organizations aren't utilizing this data the way they should, the way that I feel they should. And that is to know more about your customer and deliver smarter communications to those customers. And so um, one thing that you must consider when building out your digital strategy is to, again, utilize this data so you can um, uh, resonate more with your with your customers. Now here is a traditional marketing funnel, right? So you have the different phases of the marketing cycle. So at each phase, you're able to utilize uh, some of the data and particularly the social data to um, to activate your customer at each of those phases. So for example, in the prospect phase, when people are just searching for um, your product or your service, maybe online, you're able to utilize data to reach more prospective customers because through the data, you'll obviously be able to see exactly the types of keywords that they're using. If they're doing search, you're able to see where they are located um, you're, and you're able to see the types of content that they're consuming. Um, and then in the inquiry phase, uh, you're able to identify and proactively address any conversations online. So if you ever noticed, uh, let's say that you're going on vacation and that you uh, posted something on social media, and when you posted something on social media about, the va about a vacation or use a hashtag, organizations may actually respond to you. So if you're staying at a hotel and you say, I'm staying at um, uh, Hotel X, and Hotel X responds back to you and says, welcome, and we hope that you enjoy your stay, right? If they're a competitor of Hotel X, let's say Hotel Y, uh, would be able to also jump into that conversation and say, "Welcome to our city, and next time you next time you come, uh, try Hotel Y," right? And and that's just an example of how you're able to use social listening to collect data, and then jump into um, the inquiry phase of your customer and you'll be able to gain more leads that way and build more relationships right so in the next phase is the proposal phase so what you can do is you can utilize social data to improve your conversions so for example if if you guys are meeting with a potential client what are one of the first things that you guys would do Right? You guys would look at social media, you guys would look at, uh, let's say, their LinkedIn profile to see all the companies that they've worked for, um, see what interests them, their affiliations and things like that. Um, if it's a baseball team, a, uh, a football or soccer team, cricket, anything that they may be interested in, um, you, you can start your conversation off uh, and then you would be able to build a better relationship with them because you know a little bit more about them. And so that's how you're able to utilize that data in the proposal phase. Now, let's say that they uh, accept your offer or they purchase your product. What you can do with the social data is you can utilize it to improve the retention. So you can look at the data and listen to how they are using your product or service, what they feel about your product or service. So that way, um, you can do things to retain them 
and do things to potentially upsell them as well or add add-ons and, and, and other additional products uh, for them. So those are different ways that you're able to utilize the data in your sales and marketing process to uh, establish um, your audience as your customers, right? And, and that's, that's all about conversion. And so I highly suggest that you utilize data for that. Now, um, Gail says that we know, we want to know what customers are looking for, what their values are, how we can meet their needs. It's not just about big data, it's about translating that to truth. And so ultimately, the only way that we're able to truly know our customers is by looking at the data, right? You can ask your customers what they like when they're, let's say, at your store or um, online, but they're going to be slightly biased, right? So they're, they're going to tell you what you want to hear so that they're able to get the best price, they can potentially haggle, and, and so on. And that's fine, but when you look at the data in their sales transactions, you'd be able to know the truth. And it's important doing that, uh, it's, it's important to do that because once you're able to utilize the data to know the truth, you're able to create content based on that data. And what you're able to do with that content is use it to place yourself in the path of your customer's journey. So as you look at the data and create content based on that data, that content will show up in search engines. And people utilize search engines because they have questions and they want answers. Right, and so if you're able to place your 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 product or your service right there in the middle of that that cycle, then you'd be able to easy easily convert that search user into a customer because they have found content, they have found you uh, through search engines and so on. And so, as I mentioned earlier. I am the digital brand manager for the University of Southern California, and I also mentioned that I would um, provide some insights on uh, what I'm doing here at the university, as well as some clients and so on. So here's a case study, right? I essentially operate as a team lead for a digital marketing department, and we are responsible for essentially acting as an in-house agency. And so we develop a lot of the digital communications for the admissions department and financial aid. So one of our objectives is to get uh, prospective students to ask us questions online. And so we have our uh, USC admission uh, Twitter handle where we field questions in. Uh, and we do this in order to collect data, right? So here are some actual questions that prospective students ask. Um, so it could be about scholarships, it could be about international students, it could be about um, financial aid and so on. So what we do is we look at reoccurring themes and keywords. And once we figure out those themes and keywords, we create content to fill in the gaps of communication, to fill in uh, what students of prospective students are, are asking about, right? So we want to make sure that we create, you know, we look at the data and create this content uh, that would help them uh, in, in their uh, college admissions process, for example, right? Um, and again, it, it's very important uh, that we do that because from what we noticed is we would send out emails, we would post things on our website, um, and we would send out things through our, 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 our national mail, and we would get calls coming into our call centers um, that ask the same questions about the topics that we just sent them through email or posted on our website. So that created a gap in the communications, right? And so again, we want, what we want to do is create content to fill in uh, that gap uh, in communication. And so as an example, uh, we noticed that there was um, a lot of students asking about the dorm life on campus. So what we did was we simply created content about the dorm life on, camp 
on campus. And for you, if you have customers that are talking about how to utilize a product or a customers that may be confused about how to purchase your product or service, you have to create content, obviously, to fill in that gap. And that could be a video walking in through the steps on how to actually purchase or how to use your product. And once customers are comfortable with that, then it'll be much easier to convert them. And of course, your audience is your most valuable asset, right? Gather data by listening to your audience and understanding the conversations to formulate a strategy that will ultimately engage them. And we're able to do this by listening and collecting social data. And as I mentioned earlier about our example of creating content for dorm life on campus, this is a series that we created that was a spoof of MTV Cribs. Right, and so this essentially was a show that uh, showcased all the distinctiveness of uh, the dorms on campus. And so this particular series was um, created strategically. So, for example, USC dorms is an actual key phrase that most students would um, search for. Um, when they're searching for, obviously, dorm life on campus. And so this particular series is one of the first um, uh, uh, content pieces that show up in our search engine results because of it. And this is a very unique content piece. Uh, it was highlighted by University Business, and it was also um, highlighted uh, by Hootsuite as being a very innovative uh, content marketing campaign. And so that's something that you should do. But this is something that you should not do. So here's an example of some things that were happening in, in the United States uh, with, uh, with police brutality. Uh, and so um, the New York Police Department uh, established a tweet, or excuse me, established a hashtag. And um, it essentially backfired uh, after being inundated with photos of police brutality uh, via Twitter when they created this hashtag. And so the NYPD uh, sent a tweet saying that it might feature the photographs on its Facebook page. But the responses turned ugly uh, and people tweeted uh, pictures of, of cops doing these type of things, right? It's pepper spraying um, demonstrators as an example. So this is something that you should not do uh, with digital marketing. And the reason why I say you should not do this is because before creating a campaign, you want to make sure that you um, review all the possible consequences that can come from that particular hashtag. So if you're selling a product or service that is, um, may have some, some, some um, health um, concerns uh, from your customers or um, you know, anything that could cause a, a backlash or backfire, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, consider uh, these things before creating this, this campaign. And this is something that's very important because, um, you know, I have clients and I work with organizations that uh, want to create hashtag campaigns. And so what you should do is have a backup plan, right? So you want to test the hashtag before heavily marketing it. Okay, it's very important that you do that. And you also want to have an alternative campaign prepared just in case uh, your original idea uh, is it turns out bad, right? And you also want to monitor the conversation, right? So you want to follow hashtags to keep track of uh, trends in your industry, right? You want to see what your competition is doing, what influencers are saying, and, and, and how your customers are reacting to these hashtags, right? But, but ultimately, hashtags can be a great way to engage with followers uh, on the proper platform uh, if you want to introduce new products or services uh, or gain traction for an event. You definitely uh, can use hashtags, but you just want to make sure that you have a backup plan uh, because you don't want to end up like the NYPD and having some things, um, your campaign backfire on you. And so that is what I would say you should do uh, for your digital marketing campaign. 
And so I'm going to give you some more uh, more tools uh, on on how to develop your digital uh, marketing strategy. Uh, one book is called uh, Data Science for Business, and the other is called The Signal and the Noise. And these are both about uh, big data and really how to identify uh, trends within big data and and um, how you're able to utilize big data to uh, predict what uh, your customers uh, may want or need. Now I'm going to say a little bit more about myself. Um, I am a big baseball fan uh, and I had the opportunity when I was younger to be a bat boy for a day uh, for the Oakland A's. And one of my favorite movies is Moneyball. And Moneyball, of course, um, was a movie, a uh, book actually originally by Michael Lewis that turned into a movie uh, about the Oakland A's. And I absolutely love Moneyball because it's the quintessential David and Goliath story, um, except it's more business oriented, right? So it shows you how you can utilize strategy to be competitive if you have a limited budget, if you have no budget, or if you're a lone soul that's responsible for executing your organization's business objective. Right? So the central premise of Moneyball is that the collective wisdom of a baseball player, um, baseball player selection is subjective and, and often flawed. So you may have someone in your organization that has tunnel vision, where they're accustomed to utilizing the same marketing tactics year over year. Um, they may even jump on the bandwagon and starting to start to incorporate social media tactics, uh, things like that. Um, but do they believe social media and essentially digital marketing uh, is critical to acquiring new customers? Or do you think that they would prefer conventional methods? Well, when, when picking baseball players, uh, the general manager played by Brad Pitt uh, in this movie and his assistant, they took an analytical approach um, and they utilized data to assemble their baseball team, right? So they picked players based on the qualities um, that defied conventional wisdom, such as what a baseball player should, should do, um, and they didn't have money um, to buy the top players like other major league teams, such as the New York Yankees, as an example, right? So they had to utilize this data in order to do this. And I think during that year, they had a payroll salary of $40 million compared to the New York Yankees that had $125 million to pay their players. So they were able to get all the quality players. But the Oakland A's during that time, they had to figure out a way to, to win uh, on a very limited budget. And they did win. Uh, they actually were able to um, uh, finish first in the American League West uh, and they set uh, an American League record of 20 consecutive wins. And they did this all by adopting a data-driven approach. And also, the Boston Red Sox took that same data approach, and they actually ended up winning the World Series in 2004 for the first time in 86 years. Now, is this a coincidence? No. When the Oakland A's and the Boston Red Sox took a data-driven approach to winning, they both implemented data into their game planning. Well, what does this have to do with you and your organization, I bet you're asking. <laughs> well, it has a lot to do with your organization, right? So, so Gary Fudson says, you don't build a team, you don't put together a team with a computer. But do you put together your digital strategy with data? I absolutely think that you should, right? So as marketers, Sometimes we prioritize the technique and the execution, and then we consider the data post-execution. Right? So let's flip that on its head, and let's start looking at the data first when we're developing our digital strategy. Because even if we have a very limited budget, or if we are a small organization, we would be able to utilize the data to be more competitive. So here's an action plan for you. Utilize data to inform your digital communications. And again, utilize your data to inform your product or service offerings.
All right, number three, you have to plan, right? So when you're developing your digital strategy, you want to make sure that you put together a plan. And there's a couple questions that you should ask yourself, right? How do you want to grow your business online? What's your current digital marketing situation? You know, have you established any goals? And what are your plans on achieving some of those goals? Now, it's very important that you ask yourself that when obviously building out your digital strategy. And of course, as marketers, this is something that we know, but you should definitely focus on spending some time on doing this. And so here's something that you should not do. I'm going to give you an example. Um, healthcare.gov. So recently, um, there was a um, an Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare, became law uh, in the U.S. And uh, one of the components of the new law was a federal exchange website, but it was plagued with many, many bugs. In fact, there was um, talk that the website was crashing, um, people couldn't get on and register for health care and so on. Right? And so I use this as an example because it's very important um, example of what you should not do when establishing a digital marketing strategy. And that is making sure that your server is equipped um, to handle all of the traffic that's coming in. So no matter how big your organization is, you could have these technical issues. And it, it is very important to make sure that you have a lasting first impression for your customers. So if you're doing a big campaign and your website is not able to handle it, or you haven't upgraded your hosting, then you definitely should before launching that campaign. Another question that you should ask yourself is, how do you want to grow your business online? When developing that plan, you ask yourself, um, how are you going to reach prospects or customers? How are you going to engage with them? Um, what are you going to do when you're digital marketing to convert those customers and, again, retain them as well? And this goes back to the digital marketing funnel that I talked about earlier on with how to utilize data at each different phase. So you're going to put that into your uh, digital marketing strategy. And when you're considering social media with your digital marketing strategy, um, Jay Bear says, focus on how to be social, not how to do social. And that's very, very, very important. I cannot stress this enough. If your organizations are active on social media, you want to make sure that you are acting as a human and not a robot, right? And I'm going to give some examples um, of, of what not to do in that situation. But the best advice that I can give is obviously do things that you would do um, with some of the things that you should do in your personal life um, may come off very well for your, uh, your business uh, brand. Uh, but of course, you want to make sure that you're strategic uh, with, what you're, with how you're engaging but the simple fact of the matter is you should engage on social media. That means when you post content, be available to respond uh, to that content, uh, to ask questions, uh, excuse me, answer questions to some of uh, your customers that are coming in through social media, and so on. And again, here's an example of what you should not do with social media. So for this particular case study, Domino's uh, had a customer that gave praise to them on their Facebook page. They said, hey, I really like your pizza. And Domino's responded with a very generic message saying, we're very sorry uh, that you have a complaint. Uh, please contact us here and your complaint would be addressed. Right? Now that's automation. Right, and so you want to make sure that you um, have you're responding to your customers in a way that's relevant to them, and that's not completely automated. And if it's automated, you have to have a human uh, vet some of those messages that are coming out on social media. And that's very important. So in this Domino's case study, this is exactly what you should not do when you're developing your digital strategy. So another question that you should ask yourself is, well, what's your current digital marketing situation? 
So how are you going to analyze your audience? Um, how are you going to understand what your, con your competitors are doing? Um, and who are your potential partners to uh, expand your brand or grow your awareness uh, online? Um, and then also, really, what your SWOT analysis, what your strengths and weaknesses and opportunities and threats are uh, for your digital marketing. Um, do your competitors have an app? Uh, do your competitors have an online um, help desk uh, for, for their customers? So these are some of the things that you should consider when developing your, your digital strategy. Now I'm going to give you another quote here. Again, it's, it's human nature to stick with traditional beliefs even after they outlast any conceivable utility. And this is true, right? Again, as I mentioned earlier, your senior manager may have tunnel vision. They may think that uh, marketing should be very traditional uh, and that um, most of your resources, your marketing resources, should go toward more traditional means. But it's important that you create that buy-in for your senior manager to let them know that it's important to consider digital as a great way to engage with customers. Uh, and that way, once you have their buy-in, you'd be able to create a better digital marketing strategy. So that's one thing that you should do. Now I'm going to give you another case study as well, and it's Southwest Airlines. Now Southwest Airlines is a big airline here that flies only uh, in the United States. And I love this airline because um, it showcases their employees. And remember when I, talk, remember when I uh, uh, told you that you should focus on how to be social and not how to do social. Well, they're able to, Southwest, uh, they allow their employees to be very creative in, in how they interact with their customers. Um, you have uh, different YouTube videos that pop up online uh, about uh, their flight attendants singing, uh, playing games uh, on uh, during the flight, and things like that to uh, to make sure that everyone is having a good time and everyone is comfortable. And so that's something that I think that you should do when implementing your digital strategy is allowing um, the, the stakeholders in your company to, to be vocal, but also teaching them how to do so uh, in a proper way that represents your brand as well. But ha overall, having fun. And I think fun really uh, resonates well with uh, consumers. And so here's another uh, airline of what you shouldn't do, an example of what you shouldn't do with British Airways, didn't respond to a customer, um, and that customer essentially uh, went on a Twitter rant um, and, and actually paid to promote uh, that tweet, uh, and it really caused a big bat backlash uh, for, for British Airways. All right, last set is your goals, right? So looking at your goals, setting your vision, evaluating your goals, establishing your analytics, uh, and then understanding how you'd manage your digital marketing effort should all play, uh, should, you should all, you can consider that, excuse me, um, when you're searching for uh, your establishing your goals. Here's another crazy example. Um, this was a defense attorney, excuse me, uh, yeah, criminal defense attorney uh, who got himself arrested allegedly for a DUI uh, that resulted in a hit and run only to have his banner ad appear next to his mugshot on a local mugshot site, right? So while this mishap didn't involve a brand advertiser, it, it, advertiser, it should serve as a cautionary tale for marketers who rely on algorithms or programmatic buys, right? You want to make sure that if you're, if you're doing some things illegally online, you don't end up on a mugshot, uh, on a mugshot website and then have your ad run right next to it. That could be pretty damaging uh, to your brand, right? And so again, when, you, when you're talking about goals, uh, you want to plan on how you're achieving some of those goals. And that would be uh, a last step in that process. I also have a content marketing calendar available. Um, if you're looking at building your content marketing, um, I utilize this calendar for myself, my personal brand uh, for USC, and as well as my clients. 
on, um, on um, when different uh, social content would be displayed uh, online and so on. So you can feel free to go to my website there, jontedwayne.com slash content marketing calendar. All right, the last step is to measure everything. Right, you want to establish your, your key performance indicators. Um, you're really looking at the type of analytic platform that you're going to use to, to, to measure uh, and so on. One important thing that I want you guys to know is like measurement is like laundry. All right, so it piles up the longer you wait to do it. So if all this data, if you don't look at the data and act, and act on that data, it's just going to pile up and it's going to become overwhelming for you. So in establishing your digital marketing plan, um, our digital marketing strategy, you should definitely look at the data before it becomes overbearing. And also understand that marketing is everything, right? So marketing is your sales, marketing is your customer support, marketing is your human resources, right? And so uh, when, you're, when you're trying to expand on your marketing, establish a digital marketing strategy that considers everything, that considers your sales, that considers your human resources and your employee recruitment, um, that considers your fundraising and so on, right? Digital marketing uh, plays a significant role uh, in that process. And here are also some key performance indicators as well that you, can, that you should focus on when measuring your digital marketing campaigns. Uh, this is also a blog post that I wrote um, outlining the 10 engagement metrics that you should be tracking. That's available on my blog as well. Also, you want to identify targets uh, for, su for success indicators, right? So what's, what's really working for you, right? Um, it's important to establish that when you're, when you're looking at measuring your digital marketing uh, strategy. Uh, when it comes to social media, this is a very popular post that I wrote about um, finding your brand's social truth, right? So if you're trying to become more social, um, that's a great blog post that you should look at. Uh, and then also establishing your, your um, analytics platform. So I'm sure that most of you guys are utilizing Google Analytics. I am as well. There's other analytic platforms there. Uh, but that should also be included in your digital marketing strategy uh, as well. Right? And so I'm going to give you guys a couple, uh, couple tools to utilize. Uh, Google Analytics is one. Um, of course, my, my blog on how to measure your Google Analytics post. Um, HubSpot. The Adobe Marketing Cloud, Go Squared, Moz, Web Trends, that's also a competitor for Google Analytics, uh, Simply Measured, Social Bakers, Falcon Social, uh, Adobe Social, of course Hootsuite, and I have a blog post on the five effective ways to measure your digital strategy as well. All right, we're coming close to the end here, people. All right, so um, what you should do uh, to execute uh, improvements uh, on your on your digital market strategy is just to make those adjustments uh, and any changes to your campaign based on your measurement uh, and track only what you can to make sure you get uh, the specific da data. Uh, and, and it's important because you want to make sure that you're tracking things so that you can make improvements. And that's the most important thing. So as I mentioned earlier on, um, I was going to give you a treat. And here it is. It's a download that um, outlines the do's and don'ts of the digital strategy, right? of your digital strategy. And so consider this a cheat sheet. It outlines everything that I talked about uh, in this presentation. Uh, it also gives you links to the tools that I've used. Um, so you can go ahead and feel free to download that now. Um, it's bit.ly.com uh, slash digital strategy cheat sheet. And I believe that is case sensitive. Uh, so uh, it's all capitals. That's, that's capitals for every first letter, excuse me. Um, so go feel free to download that. And if you guys have any questions for me, 
now is the time. I'll go ahead and uh, on my webcam here and uh, see if you guys have any questions for me. Does any any questions? Okay. Well, you're thinking about your question. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat my question. How do you manage to get that many followers, and how do you handle them? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. I'll, I'll, okay. Is it better now? Okay. How yeah. how did you manage to get that many uh, Twitter followers? <laughs> Almost. So how did you manage? That's how do you handle? How do you handle them? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. It took me about maybe two years, uh, maybe two and a half, to get those uh, Twitter followers. So essentially what I did was I focused on engaging with the right people that can uh, amplify my, my message. So the people that I know who are retweeting, I would actively engage with them. I would ask people to retweet my content. Um, and first and foremost, I would create content all the time. Right, and so I have um, an automation program that uh, essentially uh, tweets out a lot of my different blog posts and things like that, and I make sure that I include hashtags, right? Whether it be social media hashtag, content marketing, um, digital marketing, uh, small business, things like that. So I make sure that my content is in right there in the conversation uh, for people to see, um, and that's how I was able to build. Uh, the following and I also I spend about maybe 20 minutes ah, maybe 10 15 I would say minutes a day on engaging with my Twitter followers and so that's answering some of the questions again if someone has questions now and they ask me on Twitter or if someone is to watch a replay um, and, and ask a question on Twitter I'll go ahead and respond that way so that creating that engagement is how I was able to build that Twitter following Okay, how do you manage to handle them? Yeah, so um, again, just 10, yeah, just 10, I handle what I can. And I can't answer every single question, um, but I spend 10, 15 minutes a day, and I just answer um, the ones that I'm able to answer. And I'm sure that people understand if you have, you know, 100 or 265,000 Twitter followers, you know, Sometimes their questions will get answered, sometimes it won't. But I try my best. Yeah, okay, we still don't have questions. Uh, somebody says thanks. Uh, somebody uh, agree with your example on Southwest Airlines. Um, any questions, guys? Yes, so no Riz question. says thanks for the digital strategy cheat sheet. Uh, Riz, I hope that it helps you uh, tremendously. Um, and uh, Ken Wall, uh, yeah, I, Southwest Airlines, they do great. Um, and he says that the seminar was perfect. I'm glad you got some, some information that you needed from uh, this presentation, uh, Ken Wall. So uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> no question? No very question. Was, okay, Dian, she got the question. Yeah, so... Uh, the question is, uh, what do you expect in the digital mark in digital marketing in the coming year? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, in digital marketing in the coming year, I think we are um, going to see a rise in live uh, broadcast uh, apps, uh, and more people are going to engage uh, live via social media than we have before. Um, you have apps such as uh, Periscope, Meerkat. Uh, Blab is also another uh, app that people are using this year. Uh, and so um, I, I, I relate this to live TV versus uh, scheduled programming, right? Um, more people watch live TV, and, and that has everything to do with sporting events and things like that, right? So there's a trend. Uh, that, that's going toward consuming live content versus scheduled content that you can uh, consume at a later date. So that's where I see digital marketing going. Um, more brands are going to start engaging live uh, with their audiences. Um, and so I, I would say definitely be on the lookout for that. And also, uh, if you're not engaging live with your customers, uh, I would say start doing that now because um, you will at some point because that will essentially be the trend. 
I think we've got another question here. Sure. Yeah, just down there, just read it out. Oh, sure. Um, let's see. We, so, well, I just downloaded. Hope you get back to after implementation digital strategy, losing out of content more. I'm getting digital flows. Okay, so um, Riz essentially asks, um, what, what is next for content writers? Uh, and so I would say what's next for content writers is um, essentially some of the things that I presented in this presentation, and that's looking at the data, right? And the data is very important to how you write your content because uh, it's not about uh, creating content for content's sake. That's, you know, essentially creating content just to create content, right? You have to create content with a purpose. So for content writers, they're going to start um, utilizing data to write highly relevant content um, and to really produce highly relevant content um, because there's so much content out there and so you have to do something to make yourself different and one of the ways uh, to do that is to create content that is highly relevant to your customers. Okay, uh, create content uh, very, very relevant to your customers. And uh, you were saying about videos. Okay, yeah, you can see double sound. So, any more questions? I don't quite understand that question. Check out on video or live. I think that just came in a little bit after. So, I think that had something to do with the last question he had about content. Um, so, uh, again, um, if you guys have uh, any other questions, uh, that if you guys just wake up in the middle of the night and think of uh, some magical question to ask, feel free to uh, to tweet me or ask on social media. Um, and if you're, uh, again, doing a replay of this webinar, uh, feel free to, to tweet me at Junte Delane um, is my Twitter handle uh, as well as Instagram. So um, I think that's all the questions that we have, Anton. Yeah, I guess this is, would be it. Uh, we, we have to thank you, uh, Junte. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you will like this, this webinar, and I hope we'll have more, more like it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Take and care. goodbye.